Hi there, welcome back to Calculus of Variations. This is video number 16b. I'm going to have a, another look at the derivation of the Jacobi accessory equation. This derivation is a bit more elegant and uh, it's quite easy as well. Okay, now as a motivation, let's consider we have a function f okay, of one variable. It's x and y, and that's a function. Now if you look at the gradient of the function at that point here, we'll call that point x1, so the gradient is going to be df by dx, okay, at x1. Now if we look at the gradient now at that point there, we'll call that point x2, then that's going to be df by dx at x2. Now we could draw those in, so that's some gradient there and that's some gradient there then we can ask the question what's the rate of change of the gradient as we move along the curve okay so let's for example the curve was let's say the curve is really steep like that then this new gradient would be very steep so we would expect the rate of change of the gradient at this point here to be large if the curve was really shallow then the gradient here would be really shallow so the rate of change of the gradient you'd expect to be quite small but we can work that out what the rate of change is at this point here just by using basic calculus again so we can take df by dx by x2 the gradient x2 minus df by dx by x1 the gradient x1 then we could make we could take divided by del x, del x is x2 minus x1, we could take the limit delta x tends towards zero. Okay, now you can see there what you're going to have is df of well, x2 is just x1 plus delta x minus df of x1 all upon delta x and it's the limit as delta x tends to zero so that's just going to be the second differential which is going to be d squared f by dx squared okay so that's just the rate of change of the gra gradient at that point now we need to do the same sort of thing but we need to do the same sort of thing with a functional so again as a motivation if we take a rope hanging like that Okay, well from one end, just a segment of a rope, and we took that point there, and we moved it to this point here, then we know from what we've done previously, that all the changes that occur from moving from here to here are given by the Euler Lagrange, so you're going to have a change in the function due to a change in the y position, partial f or partial y, you're going to have a change in the function due to a change in the, the gradient and that change in the function due to the change in the gradient well the gradient changes one way at this end and it changes different here at this end here okay so the, the gradient changes over some small um, distance dx okay so the, var the gradient varies over some distance dx so that there gives us all of the changes that occur now we want to do something similar up here down here as we did up here we want to find a new point and a new lot of changes so what we can do is we find a new point we can take the rope steady going to there we'll pull it down to there okay so now we're going to have if we call that one which is the original lot of changes so now we're going to have partial f upon partial y, which is the new change in position. And we're going to have d by dx of partial f upon partial y derivative, okay, which is the new lot of changes in gradient. And we're going to do the same sort of thing here as we did up above. We're just going to say, what's the rate of change of all of the changes as we move the rope up and down? 
Again, I'll say that again. What is the rate of change of all of the changes as we move this rope up and down? Okay. In the same way here, we're saying what's the rate of change of the gradient? We're asked for rate of change of all of these changes. So we could look at um, taking the new lot of changes and taking away the old lot of changes, dividing it by this distance here, which is the change in distance that we've moved it, and take the limit as this distance here tends to zero, and that will give us our value that we're looking for, the rate of change of the changes. Now, I'm not going to do it like that. That was just the motivation. What we're going to do is, because that, that's a localised derivation, what we're going to do is use the derivation that we used in order to derive the oil Lagrange, and it went along the lines of something like this. If you just, as a, just to remember, if you had a, some extremum there, okay, and we want to add on a variation onto that that curve. Now, the way that we add on the variation onto the curve over the entire length of the curve is we take another function there. Let's call that our function uh, is eta x. Okay, and then we can vary eta x by using a parameter epsilon, just a number, okay, which will give us a whole family of curves. So there's epsilon. Okay, so we take that and we add it on to our original extreme on y of x. So that's our y of x there. Okay, our y of x, then we get our new function large y of x. Okay, now that's the process we used in order to derive the Euler Lagrange. Now, what we want to do is if I can just maybe rub some of these out. This was it's a bit better. Okay, so we we'll have our epsilon x. Okay, mm -hmm. so eta x, sorry, uh, times epsilon. So now what we're going to do is we want to add in another lot of changes. In the same way here, we're moving the position from here to here. It's a localized movement. In the same position, we're moving. In the same respect, we're moving the point from here to here. Okay, in order to change the gradient. Now we're looking to create another lot of changes in this here. So we could get another lot of changes. What we could do is we could use another family of functions. And that other family of functions we could call that, say, um, it's u of x, okay, times eta, times epsilon, sorry. And if we add that on to y of x, we get some other, I'll just call that y1 of x, we have another lot of changes, okay? So now you can see where that u of x and eta of x come in, they're, they're two separate um, functions. So let's do that, okay? So these are our changes which we're adding into this here, and then we're taking off the original lot of changes, okay? So I'll try and get them all on the same line. So we're going to end up with a function. Um, so if we just look at the Euler Lagrange, it would be partial f of, and it would be x, y, and now it's y plus our epsilon u. I'll not put the x in because we know it's a function of x, okay? And it would be y derivative plus epsilon u derivative, okay, by dy, okay, and we were taken away d by dx of the function partial f, and it's the same thing again, it's going to be x, y plus epsilon u, y plus epsilon u derivative okay all upon <laughs> delta y derivative okay so that there first bit there is equivalent to our 
new position here or equivalent to our new position here okay so this is our new position due to the add adding on the u of x okay uh, epsilon u of x now we take off the original so we take away and i'll try to keep it all in one line so you know we're taking away the original Euler lagrange so it's going to be partial f now i won't bother right now and i'll just write the Euler lagrange partial f by partial y minus d by dx of partial f upon partial y derivative okay now again that's partial f of and i'll just write it there just so we've and I'll rub it out. So it's going to be partial f of the original position change, which is x, y, y derivative. Okay. And the new position is x, y plus epsilon u. Okay. And epsilon y derivative plus epsilon u derivative. Okay. So let's rub that out. So now we've got these two here. Okay. The equivalent of these two here. We've just got to divide it by our change. Now, we're actually, when we did Euler Lagrange, we found the variation by varying, picking a function, u of x, or picking a function, in that case it was e to x, and varying it by epsilon. So we're doing the same thing here. We're picking a function, u of x, and we're varying it by varying epsilon. So we do it by epsilon. Can't squeeze it in there, but it's the limit as epsilon tends to zero of all of this. Okay, so we've ended up with the same sort of thing we ended up here. Okay, now we just have to do the differentiation. And I'll just what I'll do is I'll write it out um, rather than reading it all out to you because you can, and I'll, I'll talk about it afterwards. Okay, so I'll do write it quite quickly. Um, so we're going to have. Um, F. Although I'm tempted to talk because it seems like dead air, it's like on the radio program. You don't want any dead air, okay? I'll just read it. Um, if you partial squared f partial y squared plus mm, partial squared f upon and it's the mixed derivative partial y partial y derivative, okay? That's the first little bit minus and then the next bit is going to be d by dx of partial squared f upon partial y partial y derivative okay times u plus partial squared f upon partial y derivative squared times u derivative okay so i've just differentiating this here so i'm differentiating a partial f already with a partial y okay now the epsilon the limit is delta epsilon tends to zero that all comes in okay all disappears and comes in whenever i do the partial squared f okay and it's the Chain rule for differentiation as well. Again, um, we have to differentiate. Remember, differentiate with respect to epsilon, and and uh, y is a function of epsilon. So we differentiate that. If we differentiate that. We just get the value of u. We differentiate that there. We get the value u derivative. Okay, but we've seen that in previous videos. Um, so we've got this section here. In fact, that's that. We've got that there. Now, what we want to do is we can expand that one out that's a product of two terms so we can do um, the differentiation of product of two terms so i won't write that just leave that remains as is okay so that's just the same and then it's going to be minus now i uh, differentiate u so you're going to end up with let's make sure i get it right here you're going to end up with um so u derivative partial squared f upon partial y 
partial y derivative, okay, plus, well, minus, sorry, yep, minus, and we're going to differentiate, we're going to leave that u as it is, and differentiate this, so we're going to, we have d y dx of partial square there on partial y, partial y derivative, okay, and just minus the original, which is minus this one here, just leave it as is, partial square there on partial y derivative squared times u derivative, okay, so now we've got a be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, two of the terms cancel out, that's minus u derivative, there's actually a u derivative in there as well, isn't there? So that should be that times u derivative. Eek, u derivative, I missed that one out, okay. Okay, so that term there, it cancels with this term here, so that comes out, and that comes out, okay, and all you're going to be left with is our first term going to be u, and I'll put in just the um, the simplified version, okay, so that y double derivative, is just pull f not not, okay, that's u f not not, and it's going to be minus u uh, d by dx of, and then the partial, the mixed derivative will be um, f not 1, minus the value of, let's see what this one is, it's going to be, um, again, this one up here, it's, it's d by dx of that, it's d by dx of this value here, so that's, should be, should be, d by dx, I'll just write it again, okay, so it's going to be d by dx of this, so I'll pop it in just to get it right, d by dx of partial squared f upon partial y derivative squared times u derivative, okay, so the final term here is d by dx, d by dx of, and now this one here is um, the f11, okay, it's the y squared f, y derivative squared f11 times u derivative. Now that there is the Jacobi accessory equation, and I'll just simplify it more, right, u, f0, 0, zero minus d by dx of f0, 1, minus d by dx of f1, 1, 1, u derivative, okay? So that's the Jacobi accessory equation. It's a better way of deriving it because it allows you to see where this extra function u of x comes in as opposed to the um, original function that we'd been using, which in this case it was um, eta x. Okay, now that's all and I'll get back to you on the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.